How do I look? Hair look like shit? Always. You know, I can't believe that Nimble Neuron made a character specifically for me. I mean, come on. Blue and red? Blue and red. Blue and red. That's my thing. Hey man, blue and red's my thing, right? Definitely, right? See, even my roommate agrees. So clearly these two girls were specifically designed to bait me back into playing ER. And let me just say, well played, Mr. Neuron. Well played. Because it worked. Wow, what a seamless segue. Now I showed you a highlight reel with a lot of flashing colors, but what the French toast is even going on? Debbie and Marlene's passive is called blue and red because they're made for me. It even says it on the description of the wiki. Hey man, what can I say? I didn't write it. A big portion of their damage actually comes from this passive. And by big portion, I mean most of their damage comes from this passive. Each of them stacks a color up to five times per target. And switching that color from blue to red or vice versa deals skill damage and gives them move speed. And it reduces the cooldown of their switch ability. And when I say a big portion of your damage comes from blue and red, I mean it's at least half of your overall damage dealt because the secret of this passive is that it actually reduces the basic attack damage of Debbie and Marlene, meaning that they are actually mainly ability users and generally your basic attacks are just to apply stacks. Because of how they interact, it makes sense for me to talk about their E first. Debbie's E is called Cover Me Marlene and it switches you from Debbie to Marlene. Marlene then throws a shuriken that slows enemies after a short delay. This move sucks, and you should use it backwards during a chase in most cases, just for the small moves be buff you get. Marlene's E is now a Debbie. This one switches you from Marlene to Debbie, and Debbie dashes forward, knocking up any enemies in her path. This move is really good, because not only is it a dash, but you also get the same small moves be buff that swapping to Marlene gives, letting you dash forward and cut off enemies trying to run. Debbie's Q is big slam. It doesn't do a damn thing for damage and exists only to apply another stack of her passive and increase her attack speed a bit. Marlene's Q is Slice, and it exists to do the exact same thing that Debbie's version does. Now you would think that these characters are sounding pretty mid so far, except that I withheld information from you. <laughs> yeah, that's right, like and subscribe. After swapping between them with either girl's E ability, the girl you swapped from will stay on the map for a few seconds. And using either's Q makes the girl that's just hanging out use their swap ability. So what I'm saying is that if you swap from Debbie to Marlene, Debbie will hang out for a while. And if you use Big Slice, Debbie dashes forward and knocks people up. Debbie's W is World Dance. She swings her sword in a circle and it does percent target max HP damage to them and also blocks projectiles and base attacks during the swing. The speed of the swing also scales with attack speed. Marlene's W is Crescent Dance. Marlene goes, and a bunch of projectiles fly out that deal a little damage. Every two bolts that hit a target gain a stack of red. And finally, there are, which is a shared ability. Twin Rush is a large dash that magnet pulls the target it goes through and stuns them for a short time. Twin Rush also resets the cooldown of either Debbie or Marlene's swap ability. Now, normally I would go into the plan section like immediately, but I have a caveat. Uh, the recommended plan system in the pre-game screen is actually pretty good now. Like it shows you what the game thinks you should be using with your team and also what the top plans are. I actually totally recommend just going ahead and using that. However, Sometimes one tricks will use builds that are different from the norm. And sometimes, a lot of the time, it's hard to know what items to prioritize transitioning into in the mid to late game. But specifically for Debbie and Marlene, it appears that most one trick players are just using the top recommended plans, or at least something similar to that. Now, what gold items should you prioritize? In this order, weapon first and foremost, Swap it into a, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Then swap your chest piece for a mithril armor and then prioritize head and swap it for either a tactical visor or upgrade your cowboy hat. And then for shoes, either swap it to mithril boots or red shoes if you can afford it. And finally, your arm piece 
just switch it to auto armed. Everything past your chest piece really is just a bonus. And upgrading your weapon first is a must. The smolder effect it provides is just far too strong as a semi tanky melee character. So yeah, that's it. That's Debbie Marley. Sorry, I didn't actually tell you how to play them. The, the opening montage doesn't count. All right, okay, so here's what a general combo looks like on a practice dummy. Cute skills. Too bad they didn't help. Okay, now that's Debbie and Marlene. You know, Eternal Return went from like a 6 out of 10 game down to like a, a 4 out of 10 game. And now it's, it's, it's back up at like an 8 out of 10. It's pretty freaking good now. I have been following the game the whole time, even while I've not been posting videos. I've been, I've been lurking around in the shadows. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back again, baby. Not even just for like Eternal Return specific stuff. I'm making... A whole host of other things. I don't really know how to end this, but uh, I mean, it's been a while since you've seen this stupid dancing girl from Code Vein, huh? <laughs>